Om namo bhagavate sri yarana chalaramanaya uh, namaskaram. Um, today I want to talk about how are we to know what actually exists and what are the obstacles that are preventing us from knowing that as it is now. Um, in what is it, what is it that actually exists? As Bhagavan says, um, for example, in the 13, verse 13 of Uludunapadu, he begins by saying, um, uh, Jnana mam tane me. That means oneself who is jnana alone is real. Jnana here means pure awareness. So what is it that prevents us knowing ourselves as we actually are? As he indicates in the next sentence of that verse, he says, Nanabam yanum agnanam. Uh, knowledge or awareness of multiplicity is ignorance. So this is what is standing. It's our knowledge of multiplicity that prevents us from knowing ourselves as we actually are. Bhagavan says this in another way in the seventh paragraph of Nana. What he says in this paragraph is. Uh, he begins by saying, Yatatamai Uludu Atma Swarupa Mondre. What actually exists is only Atma Swarupa. Atma Swarupa, uh, Swarupa literally means own form, but it's a word that is used in the sense of the real nature or the very nature. And Atma means oneself. So Atma Swarupa is the real nature of ourself or the very nature of ourself. So what actually exists is our own real nature. Bhagavan says. So since we alone are what is real, we alone are what actually exists, why do we not know ourselves as we actually are? He gives a clue in the rest of this paragraph. In the next sentence, he says, Sipil Velipol Adil, uh, sorry, uh, Jagajiba Shwaragal, Sipi Velipol uh, Adil Karpanegal. That means, the uh, world, soul, and God are karpane. Karpane means fabrications, or Im imaginations, or mental creations, illusory superimpositions. Adil, in it. In it means in Abma Surupa, uh, 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 sipil velipol, like silver in a shell. Like, in other words, like the, the illusory silver we see in a shell, uh, the, the world, soul, and God are just appearances. Uh, um, mundrum ekakalatil tondri ekakalatil mare kindrana. These three appear simultaneously and disappear simultaneously. Swarupa, um, swarupa me jagam. Swarupa alone is the world. That is our real nature alone is the world. Uh, swarupa me nan. Swarupa alone is I. That implies ego of a jiva, of a soul. Swarupa me Ishwaram. Uh, Swarupa alone is God. Elam Shiva Swarupa me. All is, uh, is Shiva Swarupa. So, all, so everything is only our real nature. But so long as we know everything, because all these, the many things that we know, the world, soul, and God, are just uh, fabrications. They're not what is real. They're just an illusory appearance like the silver in the shell. So in order to know, how can we know ourselves as we actually are? Um, this is what Bhagavan's teachings are all about. Um, to, uh, um, oh, there's, uh, he, he also says the same thing in another way in the, in the first verse of, um, of Anma Vidde. That is, in the, as Murugana pointed out in the Anupalavi of uh, Anma Vidde, um uh um noya tamakum ulankai am amala kani poi poi ai and ori uh, oria miku mei uludu atma uh, that is oneself exists as so very real even for those who are simple minded but an amalaka fruit on the palm ends as unreal. That is usually, if, to illustrate 
that something is is very real and very obvious, it, uh, very that is patently obvious, extremely clear. The analogy that is often given in Tamil, it's often said, "Ulunkai nelikani." That means uh, um, uh, nelikani is mean the amalaka fruit. So that means like the amalaka fruit in the palm. That means something is very very clear. But as Murugana points out here, our self, our own existence, is so very clear. Even that amalaka becomes un becomes something unreal in comparison. So the one thing we all know very very clearly is our self. That is, we all know I am. We know I am more clearly than we know any other thing. But though, as Bhagavan says in this first verse. Um, May I nirantaram tan ayadu or nayadu uh, irendadabum. Though one's self exists incessantly or uh, and indubitably or uh, in, 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 imperishably, that uh, ayadu or nayadu, we can split it in two ways. It can either mean indubitably or um, imperishably. In other words, we constantly exist without any doubt as real. The one thing that is, but the one thing we cannot reasonably doubt is our own existence. So though we exist as, as indubitably, incessantly and indubitably as real, um, uh, uh, I am Udumbu Ullahum, may I Mulaitu uh, Erum, uh, the unreal uh, body and world. Uh, uh, rise sprouting as if real. That is, what actually exists is only ourself, yet this body and world appear as if real. What is the cause for the appearance of this body and world? As he, he doesn't say explicitly here, but he implies in the next sentence that it is thought, because he then uh, goes on in the next sentence to say, when Unreal darkness pervaded thought is dissolved without uh, reviving even an iota. In the reality pervaded heart space, oneself, the sun, implying the sun of pure awareness, certainly will shine by oneself. Darkness will cease, suffering will end, happiness will surge forth. Um, so the implication here is that thought is the obstacle. It's, it's the thought that causes the appearance of the body and world. Um, and he, so if thought ceases, the reality will then shine forth as it is. That is the implication. And he further emphasizes this in the next verse, but I, I, will, I will not deal with next verse immediately. Um, so to... To understand how we can know what is what is real, what actually exists. The term in Tamil for what exists is Uludu. Uludu literally means what exists or what is. Uh, so uh, this is the subject of the first Mangalam verse of um, Uludu Napdu. What Bhagavan says in this first Mangalam verse is Uludu Alladu Ulla Unuvu Ullado. Um, this sentence can be interpreted in several ways. The, the basic meaning is, if what exists were not, would existing awareness exist? That is, if there wasn't something that actually exists, could, be, could there be any awareness of something existing? Or could there be any, could there be any, could any awareness exist? The fact that we are aware means that we actually exist is the implication. That can that sentence can also be interpreted to mean, except as Ulladu, what actually exists, does Ulla Unavu exist? Does the existing awareness exist? In other words, what actually exists is only the existing awareness. And uh, that Ulla Unavu can also be taken as an awareness to think. So that sentence can also be taken to mean, other than Ulladu, is there an awareness to think of it? Um, but uh, uh, the, the basic meaning is, if, there, if Uludu did not exist, would there be an existing awareness? Um, and then he goes on to say, Ullaporul, uh, Ullalara, um, Ullate, Ulladal. Since the existing substance 
uh, what he refers to here as Ulla Porul is what he referred to in the first sentence as Ulladu. That Ulladu means what exists. Um, Ulla Porul means the substance that exists, the reality that exists. So Ulla Porul, Ulla Lara, Ulla Te, Ulla Dal. Since the existing substance exists in the heart without thought or without thinking, uh, in other words, devoid of, uh, of, of thought, Ullumenum, uh, Ulla Porul, Ulla Levan, who um, uh, how to think of the existing substance. Um, uh, how to, uh, Evan can mean how to or who can think of the existing substance. So since, since the reality exists in the heart, that means deep within ourselves, in the very core of ourselves, in the very center of ourselves, since it exists there without thought, that is beyond the range of thought, how can we think of it? How can we as the mind know that reality that exists beyond thought? And he, that's the question he asked. Oh, and that reality, not only does it exist in the heart, it, it, it is itself the heart. In other words, uh, when Bhagavan talks about heart, he, it, heart is, a, is another name for our real nature, for what we actually are. That is, the center of our self is what we actually are. Um, so, Ulla Menam, Ulla Porul, Ulla Levan. Who can or how to uh, think of that existing reality? That is, how to meditate upon what actually exists. The answer he gives is Ulla Te, Ulla Padi, Ulla De, Ulla Lal. That means uh, um, being in the heart as it is alone is thinking of it. So the heart is that which the heart is. Um, oh, being in the heart as it is. That means as as it is means as that ulaporal, which is called the heart, as it is. So how is it? Firstly, it is it exists as awareness, the existing awareness, as he indicates in the first sentence, and it is beyond thought. So we have to remain just as pure being, as pure awareness, without thought, that is meditating on it. Um, know this. So uh, to understand this more, uh, uh, more clearly, um, we, it's useful to uh, come to Up uh, Upadesha Undia. In Upadesha Undia, verse 23, Bhagavan says much the same thing, but in a, in a more compact way. What he says in verse 23 is, Ulladu unara uh, unavu verin mayin, Ulladu unavahum. That means, um, uh, because of the non-existence of any awareness other than what exists, to be aware of what exists, what exists is awareness. That is, if, if to, to know what exists, there cannot be any, other, any awareness other than it. Because if there was an awareness other than what exists, it would be a non-existent awareness. Because whatever is other than what exists is non-existent. So uh, there cannot be any awareness other than what exists to know what exists. So what exists itself is awareness. And then he concludes that verse by saying, Unave namai ulam, that awareness, that is what exists, is the implication. Unave, awareness alone exists as we. That is, we ourselves are that awareness which is what exists. So, what exists is only ourself. What actually, as he said in the seventh paragraph of Nana, yatatamai ulladu apmarsarupamandre, what actually exists is only the real nature of ourself. So that what actually exists is only awareness, and that awareness is ourself. As he says in verse 13 of Uludu Napadu, jnana uh, mam tane me, one self who is awareness alone is real. So uh, that, that what actually exists is, that is awareness is nothing other than what actually exists, and what actually exists is nothing other than awareness. What actually exists is awareness, and that awareness which is what actually exists, uh, it, alone is what exists as we. That is, what we essentially are is nothing but that existing awareness. 
So since we are that awareness, uh, that that exists that existing awareness, the uh, Ullu Nubu, as Bhagavan referred to it as in verse in the first Mangalam verse of Uludunapadu, why is it we don't know ourselves as such? Bhagavan gives the uh, indicates the answer to that in the next verse, in verse 24. Uh, in verse 24, instead of referring to Ulladu, he refers to Isa. Isa means God. In this context, Isa, because as Bhagavan said in that uh, seventh paragraph of of, um, of Nana, it is Swarupa alone that appears as the world. It is Swarupa alone that appears as ego. It is Swarupa alone that appears as God. So what... Uh, what God actually is, is only Swarupa, only our own real nature. So God, what he referred to in verse 24 as Ulladu, uh, what exists, is what he refers to in this verse, 25, as uh, Isa. And what he says in, in verse 25 is, Irakum ekayal Isa jivagal orupole arba. That means, by existing nature, God and soul are just one substance. What he means by by existing nature, irakamike, is that our existence as a as as mere being, as a pure being, as what actually exists. So in in our in in our essential being, we and God are just one substance. That one substance or oruporal is is itself our existing nature. That is that one substance, but is the reality of both God and ourself, is what he refers to as Ulladu, what actually exists, and that is awareness. So since we and God are just one substance, why does it seem to us that we are something separate from God? That is, we consider God to be something very um in every way superior to ourselves. We seem to be a limited, finite jiva, limited in time, limited in space, limited in uh, knowledge, limited in power, limited in every uh, in every respect. And God we consider to be unlimited in every respect. So what is it that makes us seem to be different from God? Bhagavan answered that in the last uh, line of this verse, he says, Upadi unave veru. Uh, that means, Upadi unavu means, uh, Upadi means adjuncts. Uh, unavu means awareness. So awareness of adjuncts alone is different. That is, though what we actually are is nothing other than God, because we are now aware of ourselves as a set of adjuncts, we are now aware of ourselves as I am this body. So long as we we identify ourselves with this awareness of adjuncts, uh, we uh, we seem to be separate from God. So this alone is what makes us seem to be def different from God. So the, the the logical implication he points out in the next verse, verse twenty five. What he says in verse 25 is, um, uh, Tane upadi vittu ovadu, tan isan uh, tane uh, unavadam. That means knowing oneself, leaving aside or without uh, adjuncts, is itself knowing God. Tanai uh, olivadam dal, because of shining as oneself. That is because God shines at the reality of ourself. If we know ourselves without adjuncts, that itself is knowing God, because our self minus adjuncts is God. That is what we, our self plus adjuncts is ego. Our self minus adjuncts is God. Is the reality is all we do. Um, so this is how we are to know God. Bhagavan uh, approaches this from a slightly different way in Uludu Napadu. In Uludu Napadu, in verse 7, he, uh, he points out uh, what, what he says in verse 7. He talks about two things, Uluhu, which means world, and Aribu, which means awareness. But what he says about awareness here is not, he's not talking about the real awareness here. He's talking about the awareness that knows the world, in other words, the mind. So in this context, Aribu means mind or ego, that the awareness that knows the world, because he says, 
Ulhu Aribu on dry Uditu Odungum Enum. Though the world and awareness arise and subside uh, uh, simultaneously. So here the awareness he's talking about is not the real awareness, because the real awareness, as he says in verse 24 of Uludnapdu, Satchit uh, Udiadu. So Satchit does, the real awareness that never rises, but the awareness that rises and subsides simultaneously with the world is, is, is only um, ego or mind. So here he's using Aribu, awareness in the sense of ego. Um, so we, we, I'll just paraphrase it slightly. Though the world and ego rise and subside simultaneously, Ulhu Aribu Tannal Olirum, the world shines only by awareness, the world shines only by ego. That is, it is only in the view of ego that the world seems to exist. So ego is the light. But uh, but uh, by which the world shines. Without ego, without the mind, there's no such thing as world. In the previous verse, he had pointed out. In verse six, he pointed out. Uh, he said, "Uluhu, I'm pulangal uru. The world is a form of five sense impressions. There, Andrew, not anything else. So the world is nothing but these five kinds of sense impressions. In other words, sights." sounds, tastes, smells, and tactile sensations. If you take away these five, there's no such thing as world. All that we know as world is only these five kinds of sense impressions. And then he goes on to say, um, uh, um, of I'm pulling, I'm poriku pulanam. Those five uh, uh, sense impressions are impressions known to the five uh, uh, sense organs. Ulahe uh, manam ondrai ondru I'm porivayal onindidu didu talal since the mind uh, since the mind alone knows the or since one mind or the mind alone knows the uh, the world by the by by way of the five sense uh, of the five sense organs, um, manate andri ulahu undo. Is there a world other than the mind? So the world has no existence other than the mind, is what Bhagavan implies here. So, and not only does the world not have an existence independent of the mind, it doesn't shine independent of the mind, is what he implies in this seventh verse. Though the world um, and the mind rise and subside simultaneously, it is by the mind alone that the world shines. And then he goes on to say, Uluhu Aribu Tondri Marivadaku Idanai Tondri Mariadu Olirum Pundramam Akte Porul. That is, um, the 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 substance uh, that that is uh, poral means substance. Poral is a Tamil word, but is more or less equivalent to the Sanskrit word vastu. So the the, the reality or substance, but uh, the real substance that shines without appearing and disappearing. Tondri mariadu, uluhu aribu tondri marivadaku idnai as the as the base or the, the ground for the, uh, or the, the, the foundation for the appearance and disappearance of the world. That is, Bhagavan often used to compare our real nature to the screen. The screen, the screen in the cinema, the screen is always present. Whether the pictures appear on it or not, the screen is ever shining. So like that, the, the real substance exists without appearing and disappearing as the, as the screen on which the world and the mind, which uh, and the awareness that knows it, uh, appear and disappear. So that, that, uh, that which, uh, which shines without appearing and disappearing as the ground for the appearing and disappearing of, the, of ego and the world, that alone is the, uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, 
oh, sorry, that which shines without um, without appearing and disappearing as the ground for the appearing and disappearing of the world, that alone is the substance, which is the whole. So here he's talking, what he referred to in the first Mangalam verse as Ulla Poral is what he is the same Poral he's referring to here, the one underlying reality. And there he said it, it uh, exists in the heart without thought. Um, uh, here he says it exists without appearing and disappearing. It shines without appearing and disappearing. It exists without appearing and disappearing. And he also says it is pundram. Pundram is a Tamil word, but it is, uh, um, it's a Tamil adaptation of the Sanskrit word purna. So it means the whole, the, the totality of all that is. So that is the poral. That is what actually exists. And so the, uh, the, the world is not real. The mind that knows the world is not real. What is real is because the world and the mind appear and disappear. But what is real is the underlying reality. So how are we to know that underlying reality? How can we see that underlying reality? He talks about that in the next verse, verse 8. What he says in verse 8 is, um, eperitu, Ebruvul etinum are per uruvil aporole kanvari adu. What that means is whoever worships in whatever form, giving whatever name, that is the way to see that substance in name and form. That is generally. Uh, we we that that's that underlying reality is what we take to be God, and we attribute to God as, as, as so many different names and forms according to um, which name and form appeals to us, and we worship that God in name and form. So what Bhagavan is saying here is, whoever worships that reality. Um, uh, in whatever form and giving whatever name, that is the way to see that substance in name and form. Peruruvil here means in name and form. Some people have taken this to mean, but it, but they take peruruvil. Ill is the is the locative case ending. So peruruvil means in name and form. Ill can also be taken to mean uh, ilada which is without name and form. So some people take it to mean that is the way to see that nameless and formless reality. Uh, Perudable can be taken as nameless and formless. But even if we take it in that way, even if we take it to mean, but, but it's true, but that reality is nameless and formless. But what type of seeing is Bhagavan talking about here? He's talking about seeing it in name and form. That is, if we worship in name and form, that is the way to see it in name and form. He doesn't mean that we can, but that is the way to see it without name and form, as he makes clear in the next sentence. That is, in the first sentence, he, the type of talk, seeing he's talking about is peruruvil. Uh, in name and form. In the next sentence, he tells us how to see, how to see it uh, unmail, in reality. So um, the, uh, the, 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 he begins the second sentence with the word ayinum. Ayinum means however. So he, he, he said one thing in the first sentence, and he's saying a contrasting thing in the second sentence. So this word ayinum is very important. Ayinum, however, an me porolin unmeil, tan unmeine ondu, odungi ondrutale, unmeil karnal una. Um, sometimes in, in, in Tamil verses, the first, in order to interpret a Tamil verse, the first thing we need to do is padachetam. That is, we need to split the word up into words. Because in Tamil, the words are joined together by Sunday, and the verses are split, not according to the words, but according to the metrical uh, feet. So in order to... Uh, uh, um, uh, understand the meaning of the verse, the first thing we need to do is to split it up into individual words as padachetam. But even that is sometimes not sufficient because sometimes in poetry, 
the natural prose order of words is not uh, followed in poetry. So sometimes it's also necessary to do what is called anveum. Anveum is rearranging the words in prose order. So here Bhagavan says, Ameporalin un male, tan un male ondu. Some people have translated this as knowing one's own reality in the reality of that real substance. But what does it mean, knowing one's own reality in that real, in the reality of that real substance? That is not what is meant. If we if we do the anveyam, then it becomes clear what is mean. Uh, if we rearrange this sentence in the natural prose order, the meaning becomes clearer. Ayinum tan unmeyine ondu. However, knowing one's own reality, ameporlin unmeil odungi. Uh, on through delay, subsiding and merging in the um, in the reality of that real substance. Uh, so, but when he says in the reality of that real substance, it's not knowing our own reality in that. It is subsiding and being one with that. On odungi means subsiding. Uh, on through means um, uh, merging or becoming one with that. Uh, that alone is unmail carnal. That alone is seeing in truth. So the, the whole of this uh, verse, the meaning of the whole verse is, whoever worships in whatever form, giving whatever name, that is the way to see that substance in name and form. However, investigating the reality of oneself, dissolving in the reality of that true substance, Becoming one alone is seeing in reality. In other words, we, we, can worship, we can worship God in name and form. And if we worship God in name and form, we will see him in name and form. But that is not the real seeing. The real seeing is to invest, because God is the reality of our self. So investigating the reality of our self and thereby uh, uh, subsiding and dissolving in the reality of that real substance and becoming one with it, that alone is, the, is, is seeing in reality. That alone is the real seeing. As Bhagavan said in the verse um, 25 of, um, uh, of uh, Upadesh Undia that I read earlier, seeing oneself without adjuncts, is is you know, knowing oneself without adjuncts is knowing God because God shines as oneself. So how to know that God, that under that that uh, uh, the underlying reality, the portal, but shines as the base for the appearing and disappearing of everything else? It is by investigating the reality of ourself. By investigating the reality of ourself, ego will thereby subside and dissolve back into its own reality, in other words, that true substance, um, the reality of that true substance, and thereby become one with it, and that alone is seeing in reality. Um, but this is the correct meaning. It's also made very clear by Bhagavan in some of the later verses of Urunaptu. In verse 20, he again takes up the subject of, um, of, uh, of knowing or seeing God. What he says in verse 20 is, um, in the first sentence, he says, Kanum tane vittu, leaving oneself who sees, tan kaduvale karnal, uh, karnum manumayamam kakshi. That, that means uh, leaving oneself who sees, oneself seeing God is seeing a mental vision. That what, what he means by that is, if we, in, instead of investigating the reality of ourself, as he said in verse 8, if we ignore ourself and we try and we see God as something other than ourself, we are seeing only a mental vision. Um, and then he goes on to say, the next sentence is a, um, a very, very, uh, very beautifully worded, but we, we, it, we need to pay very close attention to it to understand what Bhagavan is talking about, because in this sentence, he uses the word tan. Tan means oneself. He uses it, in, in very, it, it, he uses it several times. He says tanne, that's the accusative case form of it. He says tan, 
um, he says, tan mudle, tan mudlepoi, tan kadwal. So he's using this word oneself. So if we take the, the literal meaning of this sentence is, only one who sees oneself, the origin of oneself, is one who has seen God, because the origin oneself going, oneself is not other than God. What he means by that is, only one who sees oneself, that, that means only one who sees one's own real nature, uh, the, the origin, base or foundation of oneself. That is when he says, uh, um, uh, um, uh, tan mudle, tan mudle means the, 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 the origin or base or foundation of oneself. So one who sees oneself, the base of oneself, means one who sees one's real nature, the base of oneself. Here, the base of oneself means the base of ego. Uh, is one who has seen God because oneself, meaning one's real nature, uh, which alone is what is, remains when oneself, the origin or root of all other things, goes is not other than God. It's very, very, that Bhagavan has packed a lot into this sentence. So the basic meaning is only one who sees one's real nature, which is the origin of oneself as ego, is one who has seen God. Because the origin, uh, uh, oneself, meaning ego, which is the origin of all other things, when that goes, oneself, in the absence of ego, oneself is not other than God, is the implication. So uh, this, is, this makes it very clear that uh, what he meant in verse 8, when he talked about worshipping in name and form, that is the way to see God in name, name and form. But to see God in reality, we need to investigate the reality of ourself, and thereby we need to merge in the reality of God, that is seeing him in truth. And he continues the same idea in, the, in verse 21. What he says in verse 21 is, Tane um, tan um, kanal, uh, oneself seeing oneself. Halevan tane kanal, seeing God. Ennum pal nul unme enne enin. That means, if one asks, what is the truth of many texts that say oneself seeing oneself and, and one and seeing God? So what do what what is meant when when it is talked about in the sacred texts in the scriptures about oneself seeing oneself or oneself seeing God? What is meant? Bhagavan answers, um tan kanal eban, tan ondral. That means, since oneself is one, tan ondral, how is oneself to see oneself? That is, how can we see ourselves? When we are one, we cannot see ourselves as an object, obviously. So how are we to see ourselves? And then he goes on to say, uh, uh, kana onadel, if it's not possible to see, implying if it's not possible for oneself to see oneself, Talevan Karnal Eben. How is it possible to see God? If we cannot see ourselves, how can we see God? Then he gives the answer, very, very beautiful answer. Three very simple but extremely profound words. Un Adel Khan. Un means food. Adel means becoming. Khan means seeing. Becoming food is seeing. So what does he mean by this? In order to see ourselves, or in order to see God, we need to become food. We need that is, as ego, we cannot know ourselves as we actually are. As ego, we cannot know God as He actually is. In order to know Him as He as as He actually is, we need to be swallowed by Him. In other words, we as as uh, Bhagavan said in verse eight. Uh, uh, um, in verse eight, he said. Uh, Tan unmeyene ondu, knowing, ondu means investigating or knowing, investigating or knowing the reality of oneself. Ame porolin unmeyil ondu 
Odongi Ondru Dele, subsiding, merging, and becoming one with that, dissolving in that, that is true seeing. That's what he means here by saying becoming food is seeing. That is, we need to lose ourselves completely in God. So long as we, rem as we remain separate from God, we cannot know God as he is. We need to lose him ourselves in God. In other words, as Bhagavan said in verse uh, 25 of Upadesha India, we need to see ourselves without we, we, we need to see ourselves without adjuncts. So long as we see ourselves with adjuncts, we are not seeing God as He actually is. Um, so we can we can see Him as He actually is only by seeing ourselves without adjuncts. Seeing ourselves without adjuncts means losing ourselves in Him, becoming food to Him. As soon as we see ourselves without adjuncts, we cease to exist as anything separate. We are swallowed by him entirely. We become food to him. And then he continued the same theme in verse 22, again talking about seeing God. But here he takes it from a different angle. This verse 22 is an extreme, well, all the, each one of these verses is extremely important. But this is very, very beautifully expressed by Bhagavan in verse 22. What he says, it's all, all one sentence. Um, matiku oli tandu, am matikul oli rum, matine ulle madaki, uh, patil padutidital andri, patie matial padi. Uh, mati tidital ingan mati. What that means is, except by turning the mind back within, turn, Im completely immersing it in God, who shines within that mind, giving light to the mind, how to fathom God by the mind. That is, as Bhagavan said in that verse uh, 20, um, 25 of Uludunapadu, of, of Upadesha India. Uh, he said, um, um, where is it again? He, he, he said, uh, knowing oneself, leaving aside adjuncts, is itself knowing God. Tane upadi vitu ovdu, tan isan tane udumudan. Knowing oneself without adjuncts is itself knowing God. Why? Tanai olivdal, because he shines as oneself. So, God, in what sense does God shine as ourself? God is the original awareness, the light of pure awareness that is ever shining in our heart as our own being, as I am. It's only by the, it's only that light of pure awareness that is ever shining in our heart as I am, by which the mind is illuminated, and it is, and it's only by that, by by. Uh, borrowing that light of the original light, the light of pure awareness, but the mind is enabled to know the world. As he says in verse 7 of Uludanapadu, it's by the, it's though the world and the mind rise and subside simultaneously, it is only by the mind, it is only by the mind that the world shines. So how does the mind shine and how does the mind illuminate, illumine the world? The mind illumines the world because it is itself illumined by God, who is what is ever shining in our heart as our own being, as I am. So since God is always shining in the mind, lending light to the mind, how is the mind to know God? The only way to know God is to turn the mind back within. That, that is, we can illustrate this with an analogy. If you have a dark cave and you want to see what's in, inside it, if you've got a mirror, you can hold your mirror outside and reflect the light of the sun, uh, 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 the light from the sun. We can reflect it into it. We can shine a, a beam of reflected light into the dark cave to see what's in the cave. So the reflected light of the mind is useful for knowing the objects of the world. But how can we know God himself? If, if you want to... If you, if, if instead of, if you uh, lose interest in knowing what is inside the cave, and if you want to know the source of the light, uh, uh, which you're now shining into the cave, what do you have to do? If you turn the mirror 
that is now pointing inside the cave. If you turn it back to face the sun, what happens? Do you know the sun by means of a reflected light? No, of course not. The reflected light is lost in the original light, the light of uh, the, the bright light of the sun. Likewise, if we turn the mind back within, we thereby immerse it in God, that is, God is the light of pure awareness that is ever shining in our heart. When we turn our attention back within to see who am I, we are thereby uh, turning the, that, that mirror that was previously reflecting the light of the sun into the cave into, to see the objects of the world. We are turning it back towards God to see God as he actually is. We thereby lose ourselves in God. We, get, we become food to God. We are swallowed by God and he alone shines. So in this verse, Bhagavan is very, very clearly indicating that the only means by which we can know the reality is by turning the mind back within and thereby immersing it in God. In other words, we need to lose ourselves completely in God. As he said in verse 8, uh, uh, investigating and knowing the reality of ourself and thereby uh, subsiding and merging in the reality of God uh, uh, alone is seeing him, is, is, is alone seeing uh, him in truth. So to know God as he actually is, we need to turn our mind inwards, investigate our own reality, and thereby lose ourselves in the reality that is God. So in all these uh, different verses, Bhagavan is pointing, uh, however many, however Bhagavan approaches the subject, he's always pointing back to the same essential thing. We need to turn our mind back within and immerse it in God, who is ever shining in our heart as our own reality. So what is the, uh, that is, as Bhagavan said in verse, um, verse, uh, uh, 20, uh, 24 of Upadesh India, Irkum Ekeal Isa Jivagal Oruporleyaba. That is, by existing nature, we and God are one substance. That is, God is our own being. So, how are we? So, what is it that prevents us from knowing Him? It is only the Upadi Unavu. The Upadi Unavu means the uh, uh, awareness of adjuncts. So, to whom is this awareness of adjuncts? This awareness of adjuncts is what is otherwise called ego. That is, when ego is the false awareness, I am this body. When we, so long as we rise as I am this body, we don't know ourselves as we actually are. And when we don't know ourselves as we actually are, we don't know God as he actually is. So we need to lose this. Ego is the obstacle. So Bhagavan, all Bhagavan's teachings are focused on knowing ourselves and thereby getting rid of this ego. Because Bhagavan, like a, like a great, um, a, 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 a really good doctor will not be interested just in treating the symptoms of the disease. A good doctor will try to understand what is the root cause of the disease? If you can tackle the root cause, then you need not worry about the symptoms. If you get rid of the root cause, the symptoms will, will, will go of their own accord. So, but uh, uh, second-rate doctors will just treat the symptoms. But Bhagavan is not a second-rate doctor. Bhagavan is the greatest of all doctors. So Bhagavan has diagnosed what is the, what is the, uh, root cause of all our problems. Uh, all our problems uh, originate, I mean, all our problems boil down to one uh, fundamental problem, that is ego. Ego is the false awareness, I am this body. So long as we rise and stand as ego, we don't know ourselves as we actually are, and all problems uh, ensue. So after this verse, after verse 22, the next four verses, he goes on to talk about ego. So I've got another 10 minutes. I will quickly try and go through these verses because these are very, very important verses. What he says in verse um, uh, 24, uh, 23, I'll deal with this a little bit quickly. He says, Nan Indru Ideham Nabiladu. 
um, that that means this this body does not say I. When he says the body does not say I, that is a metaphorical way of saying the body is not aware of itself as I. And um, uh, in the in the um, Kali Vemba version, before this, he added in another clause, Mati Iladal. Mati Iladal means because it is devoid of, uh, here Mati means awareness. Because it is devoid of awareness, this body does not say I. Um, uh, so, as I say, does not say I is a metaphorical way of saying it's not aware of itself as I. Why is it not aware of itself as I? Because it's devoid of awareness. Here, what he means by body is not just the physical body, it means all the five sheaths. Because as he said in verse 5, uh, pancha koza uru, the body is a form of five sheaths, composed of five sheaths. Therefore, all five are included in the term body. Adalal um, aindum uh, uh, all the five are included in the term body. So what he means by body here is all the five sheaths. The five sheaths are the physical body, the anamaya kosha, the, the life, the pranamaya kosha, that is all the physiological functions that animate the body, the the, the mind, that means all the gross function, grosser functions of the mind, the manamaya kosha, the intellect, uh, the, the jnanamaya kosha, and the will, the anandamaya kosha. These five make up the body. So all of these are, are jada, as Bhagavan said in verse 22 of Upadeshundia, all the five sheaves are jada, therefore they are not, they, uh, 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 they are not, uh, uh, they're jada and the sat, he says. Therefore, they are not satana, na, satana nanala. They are not I who is uh, sat. We are sat chit. But these five sheaths are, they are asat and they are jada. They are not chit. They are neither chit nor, or, nor uh, but neither sat nor chit. Um, so he begins by saying, the body is not aware of itself as I. Then he goes on to say, Urukatum nan indru indrum arum nabila nabal pudu ille. No one says in sleep I did not exist. Um, that that in other words we are all clearly aware, but we exist even in sleep in the absence of the body is the implication. And then he says, nan ondru erinda erinda pin elam erum. That means. After one thing, I, rises, everything rises. That's only when we rise as ego, everything else comes into existence. Um, in, uh, and then the final sentence in the, in the original Uludu Napadu is, uh, in the nan engu uh, erum endru uh, nun matial en. That means investigate with a keen... Uh, a subtle and keen and sharp mind where this eye rises. In the Kali Vemba version, he says what happens when we, if we investigate but thus. In the, that is in the Kali Vemba version, he says, in the nan endru erum, uh, endru nun matial enna narovum. That means when one contemplates by a subtle mind where this eye rises, it slips away. In other words, if we investigate this ego, it will slip away. That's why he said in verse 8, if one know, investigating and knowing one's own reality, if, if one investigates and knows one's own reality, then one will uh, subside and dissolve and become one with the re reality of that ex real substance, and that is the true seeing. Then in, um, in verse 24, the next verse, he begins to describe exactly what this ego is. That is the first sentence of verse 24, he repeats the same idea that he said in the previous verse. Jada udal nana nadu, the insentient body uh, uh, does not say I. That means the body is not aware of itself as I. Satchit udiyadu. That means such it, the uh, existence awareness, the real awareness. 
uh, uh, does not rise. So the body doesn't isn't aware of itself as I. The body doesn't rise. But udal uh, alava uh, nan ondru udikum ideo. In between, one thing rises as the extent of a body. That is, since it is I, it's not it's not the body because the fact it rises. Uh, it, it, it's it called I. That means it's aware of itself as I. So it's not the body because the body is not aware of itself as I. And since it rises, it is not Satchit. So it is neither the body, which is Jada, nor is it Satchit, which doesn't rise. But it rises as the extent of a body. So this I that rises as the extent of a body, that means this false awareness, I am this body, it is neither Satchit, because Satchit never rises, nor is it this uh, body, because the body is Jada and therefore not aware of itself as I. So it's neither this nor that, but it rises in between. Rises in between means it partakes of the properties of both. It borrows its existence and its awareness from Satchit. It borrows its form from a body. So it borrows the properties of both, but it is itself neither. This is Chit Jada Granti. This is the not formed by the entanglement of Chit. I mean, Chit here means the Sat Chit, and Jada. Jada means the body. When these two are conflated as I am this body, that is that is called Chit Jada Granti. Uh, granti means not. Um, of course, Chit is never bound to the body, but uh, if, in the view of ego, we are aware of ourselves as I am this body. I am is such it. The body is something different. These two are conflated and taken to be one. And so long as we rise as ego, we are bound by this, um, this, by this knot of false identification. So this is also bandham. Uh, it is jivan. Jivan means the soul. It is nupame, the subtle body. Ahande, ego. Ichamsaram. Uh, this samsara, manam, it is mind. So this full side that rises between uh, the body and satchit, uh, this is what is called chit jada granti, bond, bondage, uh, jiva, uh, subtle body, ego, this samsara, and mind. And then I've just got a couple of minutes for the most important of all the verses. This next verse, verse 25, Bhagavan reveals the true nature of ego. And this is, the, that is the, as, as I said, Bhagavan diagnosed the disease, the, the root cause of a disease, it is ego. And what is the, if we understand the nature of ego, we will understand how to get rid of it. That is, in this verse, Bhagavan ends by, in the last line, he describes ego as Uruvatra Payahande. Uh, Uruvatra means formless. It's formless because it's got no form of its own. Hey means an evil spirit or a phantom. It's an evil spirit or phantom because it's got no substance of its own. It borrows its form from a body. It borrows its substance from Satchit. But it is neither the body nor is it Satchit. So it, it neither has form it has no form of its own. It's got no substance of its own. So it doesn't actually exist. But though it doesn't actually exist, so long as it seems to exist, it's the root cause of all problems. So what is the nature of this ego? As he says, Urupatri undam, grasping form, it comes into a body, into existence. That means as soon as we rise as ego, we grasp the form of the body as I. Urupatri nikkam, grasping and uh, a, a grasping form, it stands. That means so long as we remain as ego, we continue to grasp the body as ourself. Uru, uru patri undu mika ongam. Grasping and feeding on forms, it flourishes abundantly. Since ego is formless, all the forms it grasps are things other than itself. So that this means by attending to anything other than ourself, we are thereby nourishing and sustaining this ego. That is grasping form, it it undu it means it, it it feeds itself, it nourishes itself, and thereby it grows abundantly. Uruvitu Urupatram, leaving form, it grasps form. 
that so the very nature of ego is to be constantly grasping form. But the most important thing of all, al otum pidicum, if sought, it takes flight. That is, if instead of trying to grasp other things, if the ego tries to grasp itself, if it tries to know its own reality, if it, if it seeks its own reality, seeks to know its own reality, it will otum pidicum, it will, it will take flight, it will run away. Because, why? Because we seem to be ego only so long as we're attending to things other than ourselves. When, if we, uh, uh, if we turn back to uh, see ourselves, to see what we actually are, there's no such thing as ego to be found. Has anyone ever seen this ego? We all know ego is causing us so much trouble, but has anyone actually seen it? When people used to ask Bhagavan, Bhagavan, how did this ego come into existence? Why did this ego come into existence? He said, first you find that ego, bring it to me, then we can investigate how it came into existence. Because if we seek, if we investigate this ego to find out who am I, ego will uh, take flight, that will run away, it will disappear, because it has no real existence of its own, it's just a formless phantom. Phantoms seem to exist when you don't look at them closely enough. If you look at them closely enough, there's no such thing to be seen at all. So if we look at ourselves closely enough, this ego will take flight. And what will then remain, that is Uludu, that is the underlying reality. So how to, as Bhagavan says, becoming food is seeing. How to become food? only by turning our attention within and to see what we actually are. When we turn our attention within, this ego will take flight and he alone will remain shining as the one reality that alone always exists. Om Namo Bhagavate Sri Arunachala Ramanaya.